So one question we get frequently is, I just got audited, I'm supposed to have a traceable calibration, and what does that look like? Well, if you start off with your calibrator, this is actually a standard in itself, and you have a device under test, whether that's a transmitter, a switch, or any other number of things. You want your calibrator to be four times more accurate than whatever you're testing, but that's not all. To be completely traceable, Ned, what do we do? Well, when you make that calibration, you need to document what you use to make the test, okay. and you should have paperwork or a certificate on file that shows what was used to calibrate that calibrator. And then those calibrators, maybe at the manufacturer, they have certificates where they were checked against a higher level standard all the way back to NIST in Colorado here in the United States. So what you're saying is it actually makes a difference where I get my calibrator certified. Right. It's, it's kind of like a pedigree. You're, you're stating that this standard meets national criteria at some ratio. And in our lab at BMEX, we try to obtain a, a 10 to 1 ratio when we're checking our calibrator. Okay. And it can be very difficult. But ultimately, you're going to get a document, and we have some bullets listed here on the video of things to look for with a calibration certificate. And I've seen certificates that are very incomplete and would not pass an auditor's review. So I encourage people to study their documentation and make sure it's complete and has all the criteria that meets their system for quality and calibration. <music>